This is uh, a question that is really close to my heart in many ways, um, not just on a personal front, but also um, because I'd really like to talk about uh, the work that I've done for the last almost decade working in the local prison. And uh, so I've been teaching there a kind of mixture of creative writing and philosophy and reading and uh, yeah, all sorts of creative artistic expressions really. And um, it's really been a fascinating experience to see how the guys in there, you know, people who've maybe never had access to poetry in their lives have really blossomed through reading and learning about it and writing it themselves, practicing themselves. And there is something I think really key for me in the creative process that is associated directly with healing and understanding who we are in the world trying to find our place in the world. Um, and I think if I, if I relate that then to my own experience, I started writing when I was 16 in school and um, I was a pretty troubled teenager, as many teenagers are. And I think I used it as a way of uh, really trying to make sense of the world on one level. But also I think, and maybe I wasn't quite able at the time to articulate this, but when I look back on it now, it seems really clear to me that poetry um, was going to be this incredible tool for healing and working through uh, troubles, traumas, whatever, that we all experience in life. And so uh, it's been really quite amazing and I feel like it's been an, an, a privilege actually to work with guys who um, never had that kind of educational background that I had, I've been lucky enough to have. So I was introduced to poetry really early on. But to take it into a prison setting where you're working with men, and it's a, an all-male prison where I work, you're working with men who are, you know, up to age 70, some of whom have never come across poetry or um, only really associate it with, like, the romantic poets or poetry that has always rhymed. And it's really quite an extraordinary and illuminating experience and wonderful to see them move from a place of quite shut downness, I think, and um, inaccessibility to a, to a beautiful opening into trust over time and by degrees, but really palpable uh, over the long term. This, what I'm doing here is using poetry as a tool for healing, which is, of course, what I've been doing for myself my whole life, so why should it be any different for these men? And um, so they didn't actually want to learn to write, they didn't really care about the craft of poetry, and why should they? But it became this amazing resource for them to come and spend like an hour or, oh, it's usually sort of um, a two-hour session where um, they could come and express themselves. And I think they did have expectations about poetry, mostly because, um, well, the, the guys that had stayed in education anyway, uh, in school, had gone through school and had experienced poetry as always rhyming, um, you know, always in strict stanzaic form. And so contemporary poetry just blew their minds. And they were like, this isn't a poem. What's the difference between this and a piece of prose? So we ended up just having fascinating conversations about the way in which poetry can open in multiple directions. So um, the question of uncertainty is really interesting to me, actually. Not, uh, not just because we're living in profoundly uncertain times, uh, very troubled times globally. Um, and it's, it's about sort of somehow coming to learn to rest in that uncertainty. That's, a, that's a, actually um, reminds me of Keats' quote about resting in uncertainty and not striving towards a kind of fixed understanding of things. Which, of course, ironically, is the only thing that we can ever rely on being constant change. Um, and I think 
why I particularly love writing poetry and in fact fiction is because it allows me, in fact it, it, it requires me to enter a space of profound uncertainty in the process of writing. So when I come to sit down to write a poem or um, work on a, on a novel, I actually have no clue where I'm going or where this piece of writing is going to take me. So it might have been inspired by um, a feeling or a situation or something somebody has said to me, any number of things. Um, but I think the joy of the process for me is very much tied up with that sense of really not knowing at all where I'm going and what the language of the piece itself is going to communicate to me as writer. So I don't have control over it in the beginning crafting of the piece. If you can get the inner critic out of the way and allow that space to blossom, it's incredibly rewarding and um, inspiring. And, you know, it is only then when you come to the crafting process later on, after the initial inspiration, after the initial write, um, that you are bringing in, I suppose, a, a set of tools. And you do have a little bit more control, of course, about what you then put out into the public sphere. But I think, you know, poetry is really powerful in that sense because it offers us as writers, but also then as readers, to rest in that place of uncertainty, which we often find really uncomfortable. You know, we like to have things neatly boxed off and we like to know what we're doing on a certain day or week or year. And so, you know, thinking just about the pandemic that we're in right now, I mean, that is really ratcheting up our need to allow uncertainty because none of us know quite how this is going to pan out. Intention, the, the intention or the agendas of writers is something that absolutely fascinates me. And um, yeah, I mean, living the question is a, is a, is a different topic, I think, but I, I really, I want to talk about intention. I think that's really important, particularly right now in the times that we're living in. Um, because, you know, I was talking to a, a fellow artist the other day and just saying, you know, why do we make art? Why do we write? Why do we choreograph a dance? Why do we put a theatre piece together? And um, what is it that we're actually putting out into the world? So it may be a process that is private and we do on our own and we do for our own well-being, which is great. But then if you're talking about putting it out into the public sphere, what is our agenda with that? What is the intention of the writer with in doing that? Um, not so there's it's twofold really it's what you come to the page with as your intention what am I wanting to create what what is present in me that wants to be expressed but also then what impact do I want that to have on the world because um, for me anyway I strongly believe that any thought any feeling or any action that I take in the world affects the world and therefore that follows that whatever I write and then put out in the world, whatever work of art we make and put out in the world, affects the world in some way, shape or form. The responsibility of the artist, the intention of the artist, and how that impacts a world that frankly at the moment is, you know, struggling so much on so many levels. There is so much turmoil and so much destruction and so many crises happening at the same time. So what is the role of the artist within that? You know, what, how can they in some way benefit humanity or contribute to what is happening in the world at this time? Uh, I find that question endlessly interesting. So I really feel like I do have a responsibility as an artist and I want to add to, I want to add something positive to the world. I want to be able to investigate and interrogate the darkness, but I don't want to do it in a way that is um, sensationalist or that condones it in any way, feeds it. Uh, I feel that that's, for me, it's much more about um, understanding and emotional honesty so that we can we get to see the shadows of ourselves and face them 
but don't just um, increase their power. So it's a it's a tricky one, and I and I think pretty controversial because most artists would not want to would want to consider themselves entirely free. I think free in their expression, free in their intention, free of you know any kind of shoulds whatsoever. Um, but I, I question that. I think because of, especially because of the times we're living in, I, I really want to raise the question around that. And I, I think, um, so for me, poetry is a portal to truth, really, so on, on many different levels. So if you're a political poet, for example, then you're investigating the politics of your day and of your nation, and you're, you're, uh, you're working for justice, basically. And so you're mining a kind of truth that perhaps isn't um, recorded or um, written about in your me in your nation's media, for example. So you're you're bringing a different perspective through your poetry in that in that respect, which demands a, a level of emotional honesty and factual honesty. Although that's again a quagmire these days, isn't it? Um, but I think if I bring that back to myself and my personal experience of emotional honesty and poetry, I would say that poetry has become a most profound teacher for me. And just touching back on one of the things I said earlier about how um, the process is tied up so much with uncertainty, uh, and, I, and I, I stand by that, that's totally true, but what's interesting is that it always or often leads me to a certainty about myself that I hadn't understood before. So the honesty almost is something that comes through me rather than is already present in me, if that makes sense. It's a learning process. It's a kind of journey towards, maybe a journey away from the self and then back to the self somehow. Um, and I feel like because I'm predominantly a poet and I'm just starting out in fiction, you know, honesty has always been, truth, the pursuit of truth has always been absolutely essential to me, to who I am as a human being, but then also to who I am as a writer. And it's always been wanting to dig in, you know, what is underneath what that person says about themselves or about their culture? What What is the emotion that they are um, speaking from or hiding behind or you know, and but then not not just that. Also, if you think about ecological processes, or you know, walking in the woods, what do, what does it mean beyond the physical manifestation of just going for a walk with a the dog? There's always more, and and poetry is a way of digging into those always more truths, the the layers that are beneath the layers. And I think that's why I find it so fascinating. And also, what it does is it does it in such concision like oh my god you can do this incredibly long journey within a poem of a dozen lines you know and i think that is one of its immense powers because it condenses everything so beautifully also is one of my favorite topics in a way i mean i, I think over the years i've really come to realize that um, all art forms actually are embodied pro processes so um, it isn't just my mind that makes the poem, it's the whole body, it's a whole body experience, the process of making, but then also the process of uh, reciting or performing a poem. Um, and I think, as you say, also receiving it as an audience member or as a reader. And I, th I think that's actually, if you think about it in a kind of broad brush stroke political sense that's one of the most politically astute things about poetry and which is something that our culture has denigrated and denied and suppressed and so in that sense it's quite radically political I think um, and I and you know it, it, it has an ability I think to um, be political on multiple fronts that aren't necessarily what we would associate with a political poem. So it might not be overtly political, by which I mean it doesn't necessarily relate to um, a political situation in one's country or hometown or wherever it may be. But it's political in as much as um, it supports and allows 
forms and modes of expression which our culture wants to silence. Mm, being physically affected by a poem, being hit in the gut, um, and then really becoming aware of our bodies and, and, and the power that is inherent within them. And also things like uh, slowing down. So the way in which poetry invites us all, whether we're writing it, reading it, or listening to it, to slow down. Again, something our culture doesn't really pedestal. We like to do things quickly. We like, you know, uh, uh, efficiency, speed, um, completion of task, all that. Whereas I think poetry opens us out into a, a different um, arena, a different perspective, a different way of experiencing the world even. And then also, thirdly, and I think really importantly, this is a big aspect of all creative expression, of course, is the imagination and the way in which poetry champions the imagination. Something that, um, you know, I think our culture lacks in so many ways and tries to uh, make small or tries to control. And I think in that respect, poetry can be seen as profoundly political, actually, uh, even if it isn't conventionally political in an overt way. This has come about, the, the fiction writing has been something that I've wanted to do for a long time, um, but have literally not made time for it or not had time for it because I've uh, been rearing children. And so the, my children have been very central to my life for the last 20 years. And it's, for me anyway, the process of writing poetry is easier to fit in between things than it is to sit down and have a long project like a novel, for example. Um, so what, from a practical perspective, that's why I'm coming to it in my middle years, really, rather than having started off early. But also I think the truth is that I'm a poet at heart and I, I think that's always going to be the case. And so when I now come to write fiction, essentially what I'm doing is writing long form poetry. <laughs> I mean, not really, but you know, it's probably quite obvious when you read my fiction that I'm a poet, I would say, because the language is so important to me. Like, I just love language. I love the play of language. I love the rhythm of language. I love imagery. I find it utterly powerful in the way that it moves human consciousness. So um, I think that is kind of, in some ways, it's a natural progression. It's a deeper immersion into a longer narrative exploration, really. So I've written narrative poems before that have been quite long, but I've never, I've just written a novella which will be published next year, and I'm working on a longer novel right now. And um, it's just a joy to immerse myself in a longer story, something that um, has all the components of a poem, but it also has uh, a broader, longer trajectory that is not left to the writer's ima the reader's imagination, but is actually followed through by the writer. So I, I'm saying that because if I really firmly believe that poems have a very long trajectory indeed, and they, ha they are limitless actually, because when the reader or the audience hears the poem, they go in whatever direction their mind takes them or their body takes them. And so it's a wide open, beautiful, limitless trajectory of possibility. Um, and what fiction does, longer form fiction, um, is that it follows through a, traje a trajectory. So it offers an, an idea or a possibility to the reader. And you know, adheres to in su to some degrees, a beginning, a middle, and end, and a classic structure, depending on what kind of fiction you're writing, obviously. But there's more, um, there are more pointers, there are more um, way markers in a work of fiction than there are, I think, certainly in a lyric poem, anyway. And uh, most of the poems I write tend to be shorter lyric poems. So um, I think this is, uh, this is kind of something that is um, 
a given in a way. Like I, I don't know how it is for other artists, but it feels to me like the subjects that we are uh, preoccupied with are just so central to who we are that we can't get away from them. So it's kind of like you have this preoccupied preoccupation or this theme, if you like, that you revisit your entire life as an artist, whether you're a dancer or a theatre maker or a writer or whatever it may be. And it feels to me like that has how that is how nature and particularly writing about nature has been for me because I think ever since I was a kid, the truth is that I've always enjoyed being around animals and trees and flora and fauna of all kinds more than I have being around humans, <laughs> even though we're human animals, of course. But, I, you know, that's always been the truth for me and I, I still find that to be the case now in my middle years. So I don't think that's ever going to change. And I was, um, some years back now, I was at um, the stanza poetry festival in st andrews and um there was a round table event where um so there was a quite a well-known american poet reading from his work and then we were discussing it as a group it was a really beautiful well set up um events and anyway at one point he 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 said you know the trouble with mary oliver's poetry is that she just repeats herself every single poem and I think for me, I mean, that was quite an extraordinary thing to say anyway in a public setting, I think. But the thing that I took from that was, yeah, but come on, isn't that what we all do as artists, right? We have these, these artistic, these creative preoccupa preoccupations and, and we just repeat ourselves ad nauseum, trying to understand what it is that our soul wants to somehow excavate. There, I think all artists tend to have this, um, this one, two, three, I don't know how many areas of, of interest that it strikes me, we go back to again and again, and we keep picking away at, we keep trying to understand how to communicate about it in a way that can both help ourselves as artists, but also our audience. And um, if I think about my own poems, um, you know, if I had to, describe them succinctly they would just be love poems to nature and maybe i'll spend the rest of my life writing love poems to nature great mm -hmm.